Welcome to Alt Reality Forensic Software Analysis Discussion. Uh, this is another discussion about YouTube and what's going on and how it's broken and even going to offer a solution as to how it can fix itself. Uh, uh, the issues that are arising now within the advertiser community and the uh, creator community for YouTube are um, uh, easily thought of as a uh, business or a social problem. That is to say, you know, a business identity being hooked up to a social uh, meme that they don't want to be associated with, uh, good, you know, in, in any direction. Uh, and that's not really what's going on. There's an underlying problem that is contributing a high level of noise to everything and may indeed be exacerbating and causing even instances, and who knows how many instances, we can't tell because of the noise, of the, these uh, cases of advertisers getting their uh, message uh, hooked up with the wrong video. And uh, this relates to the way in which YouTube handles uh, the videos, how they deal with them at, a, at, a, at their software level. And here's what's going on. It actually affects me personally. I've been uh, trying to deal with it for the past year, year and a half, as it's been escalating. And we can think of uh, YouTube as being um, uh, cut into two parts, the viewer part and the um, creator part. So we have the viewer part over here, the viewer experience, and then we have the creator um, part of this over here. Within the creator program itself, all of that is run by this in the auspices of this thing they call the YPP or YouTube Partner Program. And uh, the um, creator program itself is broken. It relies on uh, YouTube um, providing uh, a unique ID, a unique identifier to every video that's uploaded. And basically this is the problem. They've done it in such a way that that unique identifier is, is constantly being gamed. They're not able to control the gaming of that identifier and that the gaming itself of that identifier for personal uh, gain uh, in the sense of advertising revenue and so on is contributing to and causing some significant level of their otherwise business social problem. And here's what's going on. I, as I say, we personally here at Half Past Human have been dealing with it. I've been dealing with it for the past year or so. When I upload a video, it gets a, a unique ID. They probably call it something along the lines of a digital asset identifier. I think this is the, the case because of some stuff I've been able to determine uh, through the use of their software and just making notes of how it's doing things and making suppositions from my years in the business off of those uh, reactions that I see from within the software. So they have this, this digital uh, asset ID. The, and that is assigned to a video uh, that I upload. And so this is my Cliff video. Cliff vid, and it gets a number and then a long string. That digital ID is used throughout their system to identify what they think this video. And uh, they've actually kind of screwed up, okay? Because here's what's going on. That digital ID in no way, in so far as I can tell, is related to the actual content of the video. Therefore, what it's actually representing is an instance ID of a contact between myself as a creator and the YouTube software. So it does not identify my video specifically and then track it no matter what happens to it uh, through an iterative process within their, within their server and within their software. What it actually does is to assign an ID value to me uploading something to it in a successful, unsuccessful, half uh, process, do you want to resume it level. I mean, so basically they're working with the instance of my talking to them and trying to upload this video. And they create this digital ID on first contact. It stays as a static member, but it's not actually uh, associated with the content of my video, just the instance of me uploading it. Ergo, certain things can happen. People are gaming the YouTube system fantastically based on and around this digital asset ID. So for instance, um, every time I uh, create a playlist and add a new video to it, a new digital asset ID value is created, which goes through their entire processing. 
even if I'm just taking my own content and re-adding it to a new playlist, they go through the whole thing and there's this whole digital asset ID process that goes on. This is great because I can game that system to get a further action within their software, within their processing, and do so by creating playlists and this sort of thing. But it's bad because anybody can add my video to their playlist and create the same process and it does not in any way reference the content of my original video. So my video is not, uh, uh, the content is not associated to the uh, digital asset ID. The instance value is at the time that I uploaded it. An instance value would be a timestamp, etc. All folded in. And so here's what's going on. People can steal my videos air, uh, constantly. They download them and just re-upload them under their own channel and let them go and monetize them. Uh, the solution that YouTube has proposed with their uh, amendments to the YouTube partnership program uh, will not solve this. In fact, I'll tell you flat out, guys, anybody that is worried about that 10K limit on uh, YouTube as a partnership program, forget about it. All you've got to do is to download a couple of my videos, upload them up to your channel, you'll get 10K hits in a few weeks and you're over that limit. Now, will they recognize this and, and stop you from doing that and saying that's cheating? I don't know. Uh, you know, I understand their intent, but that's a silly way to go about it. Uh, it because the system itself can be gamed. They're telling you up front how to game their intent, which is to validate that you've worked your ass off as a creator to come up with a content that draws an audience that is, um, uh, is uh, useful and can be monetized within this uh, particular uh, context of the uh, viewer and creator experience that we're talking about here. Bear in mind a couple of things. The YouTube partnership program is just that. You are a partner with YouTube. So as a partner with YouTube, I'm telling them, hey guys, you're screwing up. This is an instance value. It's not a content ID value. And every, a lot of your problems, a lot of the noise in your system goes away if you change that one concept, okay? Um, and so here's the solution to the problem at a technical level. It'll eliminate vast quantity of noise. It'll eliminate the duplication. It, it will do what that 10K limit will not. And it'll solve all these problems for a little tiny increase in processing value, processing time. What you need to do is you need to take the content that's up, uploaded and make the digital asset ID value tied to the content in such a way it can't be separated. This could be easily done uh, with um, a mixture of uh, video signal and audio coming from the audio or coming from the video I'm uploading to you. Use that as the seed for a hash such that, that no matter who grabs my video, that this hash would have to be run. Your process would say, wait a second, you can't put Cliff's video in your playlist. You're not the owner of it. And see, this is also what caused, uh, uh, caused one or rather it is to this effect that it is now attributed that the Wall Street Journal was able to find instances of high-level advertisers with low-level content producers, okay? And, uh, and that matchup didn't, didn't work well for them high-level advertisers. They got pissed. They yanked all their money. Why did this occur? If we eliminate the H3H3 H3, um, uh, little hiccup where they thought they had found an instance of Photoshopping, and, and eliminate that as a possibility and just look at the process that occurred. What occurred was a claimed or stolen video uh, had been uh, the source for the instance of that um, uh, uniquely joined uh, high-level advertiser to low-level content. Now, that uh, claimed and stolen video approach can't work if we uniquely identify the content via hash of the content itself uh, as our digital asset ID value and then use that as an inviolate number throughout the, the entire system. You can still use your playlist. It would still have the same effects. People could not take your videos. They couldn't steal them. They could download them and up, back upload them. And then YouTube's going to say, wait a second, we're not going to waste our time storing this thing again. We've got it over here on this server. There's no need for us to store it 15,000 times in the next week and waste all of our, our uh, processing power in our bandwidth, moving it back and forth, you know, in our disks um, for holding it, because we've already got the bugger here. We know this is Cliff's video. Something's going on. You're scamming us. And they can do that if the content is hashed and the digital asset ID value is uniquely uh, or is bound to that um, to that hashing out by via the hashing algorithm to that content. All the noise goes away. All the stolen videos go away. 
Um, in fact, it's, it thereafter becomes very easy to enforce all of the um, uh, copyright laws and all of the copyright use and content laws because you'll have the content able to be analyzed independent of the instance of its upload. And I'm sorry guys, but that sure looks like what you're doing there at YouTube is that you're concentrating your digital asset ID value on the instance and you really, to a certain extent, yes, I know you care about the instance and that's where the business thing piggybacks from, but your business decision here allowed you to create a system that's now screwing your business thing in the ass really hard. Uh, and a lot of it has to do, as I say, with this huge layer of noise within YouTube where lots of your effort is, is being wasted. And we're not talking about duplicating once or twice or three or four times. I've actually found uh, 45 at one time. I went looking 45 times some of my videos were in someone else's channels. Now, it irritates me that they're making money on it. I'm not really all that irritated because I never set out that much to, to uh, capitalize on it. Uh, it irritates me even more that to claim the money that they've made, I have to go through this elaborate process with YouTube. Uh, but uh, the really irritating factor to me as a technician is that we're wasting bandwidth and we're <laughs> wasting processing time and storage. I mean, I hate to say it, I'm more pissed off at the inefficiency of YouTube allowing my content to be stolen than I am that it was stolen. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it, it's, you get to be a technician and your brain gets warped. I can't, can't uh, say anything about that. Okay, so, yeah, so th that's basically it, guys. We can fix this problem. It's a technical issue. It has to do with the doofuses using the uh, instance of the upload in lieu of the uh, content itself. Uh, a lot of the noise goes away if they change that particular component of it, and then they'll be able to analyze and see if they really have a problem. I think they do have a problem, but that's, I think it's far less than what they think it is. The 10K limit won't work. I've, sh I've shown you how to game it. There's dozens of other ways to do it. They'll discover that really quick. Uh, playlists are pretty cool, by the way, in terms of their effect on these digital asset ID values. And you cause all kinds of processing to occur by just playing with your playlists. And to that effect, I need to note something. I've created a playlist <laughs> of all of the videos I've done about this subject. Because bear in mind, whatever you think now, this is, even though it is a legacy media attack on YouTube and attack on the, on the new media because the legacy media is dying and it's comp competition and they want to get this thing um, uh, uh, killed. They want to kill all the competition and get their money back. Uh, but beyond that, I've been dealing with these algorithm issues in YouTube uh, and Google uh, going back a number of months prior to uh, the um, advertiser boycott. So if you'll go and look at the playlist here on YouTube, uh, you'll see a number of these videos that go back as I was, began wrestling with this issue. And it's really cracked open in terms of showing me what's going on and where the problem is uh, as a result of the, of the embargo. Because it's a lot easier to track the... Um, it's a lot easier to track things when there's less activity and also it's dampened down on a lot of the, or rather it's uh, allowed the creators to sort of uh, dampen their work down and now you can see the high noise level uh, relative to forensic software analysis. And so, uh, so I it determined kind of what was going on here. Anyway, so um, the uh, couple of other things to note real quick, uh, just to kind of uh, dig it in there. Uh, the lesbian, gay, uh, the entire alt-sex gender community has only been supported on YouTube um, that I'm able to find instances of by the conservative voices. Um, and that's sad. That's sad. Uh, I think that's about it. This uh, digital asset ID value uh, it needs to be cleaned up. It'll also eliminate the issue of me having to deal with all these bastards, stealing my videos, causing a whole lot of noise, causing me having to type emails saying, no, 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 you're look listening to something that's way old, you know, uh, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I get that. I got a lot of damn emails anyway, and I don't need any more work. And it kind of irritates me that YouTube is facilitating something that's causing a uh, universe to waste more of my time. So I'm telling YouTube, hey, get off the shtick, guys. And, and deal with your instance versus uh, a unique ID value on content. And that's a, oh, and one other thing. Uh, the whole idea of the clickbait guys and their, and their theft of uh, my videos, you know, Peter Schiff videos, anybody who can get any kind of a, a draw at all is, is going to be um, a source for clickbait. I'm running in some cases, as I say, at least 40 to 50 times the amount of clickbait as original content. 
Now that's that's scary. That that means YouTube is wasting. No wonder YouTube is not making any any money. Uh, just on a te technical level, they're spending all of their time dealing with an extremely high noise level, at least within uh, the alt community. And well, the extreme alt community, the woo woo, and the uh, uh, sound money community, and the alt politics uh, level, you get a lot of this uh, clickbait theft, where people are just stealing your videos, just trying to to make money off of them. And some of these individuals will have multiple channels, and they'll just do it repeatedly for all of these channels. So it gets to be really tedious. Um, but I know of a dozen different ways to make clickbait really a lot faster if they don't change this. Uh, and maybe I'll do a video on how to stomp YouTube uh, with your clickbait uh, with a lot less work and get a lot more views. Anyway, um, I mean, if, if they don't fix this business, right? Um, so uh, that's it on YouTube. It'll be, it'll be a relatively easy fix once they eliminate the uh, clickbait and they see who the actual creators are and where the actual draw is uh, and uniquely identify uh, the views. Now it'll be crushing for the legacy media because no one's using their shit for clickbait um, in, in any uh, volume at all. And uh, we'll see where the true draw is on media at this point. I think it'll take them a couple of months uh, to even get an idea of what's going on. The approach they seem to be taking with the uh, alteration of the YPP contract in terms and service terms of service uh, with the 10k views and the other rules tells me they don't understand that they they're dealing with a technical problem or they might should deal with the technical problem first and then their um, uh, policy and uh, PR and social problem thereafter a lot of the the second goes away if they deal with the first uh, because the uh, problem is at its core so far exacerbated by the technical issue that we can't really get a true handle on what's going on. And I can also state that so far, none of the stuff I've seen in the, in the uh, YouTube partnership program is in any way going to alter the situation we have at the moment. Won't fix it for anybody. It's not going to fix it for YouTube. And they're my partner and I want them fixed. I want them to be very healthy. I like YouTube. It's really cool. It's the greatest university on the planet. I'm studying uh, TIG welding now and there's a lot of really good videos on TIG welding there. Uh, but hey, there's this guy, Mr. Tig, that kit you sold me didn't come with a handle. There's no handle on that torch, dude. You got to get me one. Uh, and I haven't been able to contact you. Your contact email thing is all screwed up on your web page. Yet another irritating thing to a technician. I, uh, and I wanted to use the torch. It's really cool. <laughs> but in any event, I, I digress. So, um... Uh, the clickbait stuff, uh, YouTube can solve that problem by using unique IDs that are hashed off of the content. And I know that they're going to say that there's objections you can't use, um, uh, that not all videos are going to have enough of an audio to be able to do enough to extract words, to do a, um, uh, that level of a hash, but you don't have to take that approach, guys. Uh, you can use some of the deeper approaches and do a stream of both the audio and the video and use that as your hash using individual byte offsets or, or whatever. Um, okay, so that's it on this. Next video up in just a second here on silver and gold.